My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Hearthstone Arena. I am going to currently ignore requests for a little bit. Um, I think Paladin is not only a card that, uh, sorry, a uh, class that has been requested, but really interesting to me. I think the Shade of Naxxramas is the most powerful out of these, because at base it usually ends up being a 3-3 on your next turn. Um, which is, a 3 3 for 3 is fine, but at the same time it also has stealth, which is a really cool element, and it also has the ability to grow way further. Fel Reaver is just too optimistic of a pick, True Silver Champion. I'm not even gonna fucking discuss that shit, it's True Silver Champion. Now, I think Arena is so aggressive at this point that I want to take the Abusive Sergeant, because 1 mana 2 1 against everything but 3 classes with hero powers that do damage is actually pretty good. Um might also make a few other one-drops uh, more significantly powerful. And Core Hound and Reckless Rocketeer are both trash, so Abusive Sergeant's fine. Mech Warper. It's a... So Vanilla, it's a 2-3 two, th uh, two, for 2, which is a decent early anti-aggression card. Stops a lot of these 2-1s that exist. Dark Iron Dwarf is the best out of these. Uh, these are all horrible, so I'll take a Bluegill Warrior that can have an immediate effect on the board. Shielded Minibot is so good. Sentient Shieldmaster 2, but Shielded Minibot also has uh, some uh, synergy, not only with the Abusive Sergeant, meaning it can do 4 damage before breaking its own Divine Shield, but also with the Mech Warper. So I'm going to take the Shielded Minibot. Uh, I'm not going to take a Flying Machine, though, am I? Oh, I can't take a fucking Redemption. Alright, I'm going to take a Redemption, and I'm just going to play it at the right time for it to be a good card. I'll take a Loot Hoarder for early aggression, plus... Uh, the fact that it'll get me a card, plus I don't really have any card draw yet. Pilot of Sky Golem is an amazing card. Truce of a Champion. It's always going to be Truce of a Champion. I don't care if I have five Truce of a Champions, it's going to be another Truce of a Champion. Um, I'm not likely to get that many pirates, so I think I'll just actually go for the Ironfur Grizzly. I'm feeling a Marnie Berserker on this play, on this, uh, on this one, but uh, maybe it's Ancient Brewmaster? How many of these things do I actually really want to bring back right now? Nothing. And I'm going to get a lot more better 4 drops. I mean, I've got a Dark Iron Dwarf, two Truce of the Champions, there's Mechanical Yeti, there's the Yeti, there's uh, Consecration, and there's Hammer of Wrath to round out all of the super powerful 4s that we're going to be offered. So I'll take an Amonic Zerker. Burly Rockjaw Trog or Spellbreaker? I'll take the Trog. Higher health. It's a huge concern for me. Millhouse Mana Storm? Millhouse Manistore? Hemet Nessingwary? Maybe. So, Hemet Nessingwary sucks because it only has 3 health, and for a 5 drop, that's trash, but it does destroy a beast as soon as it comes into play. So, all I need is my opponent to have a beast. <laughs> Millhouse Manistore, unfortunately, could lose me a game instantly. King Mukla doesn't lose me a game instantly unless my opponent has hard removal for it. All right, I'll take Mukla. It'll tend this deck far more towards the aggressive, which means Blessing of Kings is way better. Tending it far towards aggressive means Dancing Swords is a lot better, especially because I already have cards that give them cards. But Blessing of Kings is too good to pass up. Sorry, what did I just say about Blessing of Kings being too uh, Anoyatron is really actually quite good, uh, with three Blessing of Kings, is actually a really powerful card, and an Abusive Sergeant, and a Mech Warper, but at the same rate, Bold of Ogre. Yeah, Bold of Ogre. I, I, I don't have any late game, and Bold of Ogre is gonna be the biggest late game I get. Shade of Naxxramas. The problem is, the Shade of Naxxramases and the Blessing of Kings kind of want the game to go later, but the King Mukla, the Abusive Sergeant, the Bluegill Warrior... You know, a lot of those want the game to go earlier, right? So, I'm kind of in this weird position where I'm half aggression, half not. And it's not that powerful. Lepinome is two more damage to face, but having it in stealth so that it can't die to a hero power is way more powerful. Argent Protector is going to allow me to keep a lot of mine alive while I do stuff. Seal of Light is also pretty good for that. I mean, it's not amazing, but, you know, the rest are trash, so might as well. Frost Elemental is the best out of those. Freeze a minion while I do my stuff. Clockwork Gnome. Actually, yeah, Clockwork Gnome's fine. Lost Tall Strider. For a Silver Moon Guardian. Maybe a South Sea Deckhand, actually, because of uh, the two Truths of Ch No, I've only got two Truths of a Champions. It's not enough. Lost Tall Strider. Uh, that's got to be an Oasis Snapjaw, right? No, too many things on 4 mana. I'll take a Blessing of Wisdom, and I'll hope to protect a minion for a few hits. 
so that I can get a lot of draws out of it. Another Argent Protector and Enhanso Meccano. All right. Considering my early curve, Enhanced Meccano is the one I'm just going to take because I might just be able to end a game immediately. Avenging Wrath is better for the late game, but we only have two late game cards. So if we're holding out for the late game, we've probably already lost. So this is going to be a weird sort of slightly aggressive mech paladin. Uh, but a lot of our aggression is going to rely on us still having things on the field because Enhanced Meccano will only buff the minions that we already have on the field. Uh, and then also Blessing of Kings goes on the minions we already have on field. Argent Protector goes on the minions we already have on field, right? So for our success, we really need to have an early board stick. Which is going to be a little easier, I think, since we picked up the, uh, Harvest Golem. I will fight with honor. So this is more control, the other one would be way more aggressive. The Loot Hoarder is likely to just bait my opponent into using a hero power on turn two. So this looks like my turn four play, Mech Warper, then Harvest Golem. So two, three, four. Uh oh. Trog no stupid. Trog no stupid. That's still my turn 4 play. Mech Warper, Harvest Golem, and Clockwork Gnome all go out on 4 mana. That's a weird thing. Alright, well, it's not as weird now, but still. Okay. So I do have a catch-up mechanism. Oh, shit, my opponent doesn't have a card on this turn. That's really good for me. Are you guys ready? Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to leave the Shade of Naxxramas in stealth. Because if I attack with the Shade of Naxxramas, I open up my whole board to a really powerful swipe. And swipe would be kept in the early hand, and it would basically end my game, so no swipe. Swipe now still isn't horrible, but... I have to assume that the Puddle Stomper goes into my Mech Warper, and, you know, just everything is removed except for my Shaper Mech Tramus. So I'm going to put a Blessing of Wisdom on this and then attack with it. So if my opponent has a swipe, they want to play it right now. But if they swipe, this will become a 5-4 and they'll have no minions on field because swipe will take all of their mana. 4-4 charge? Really? That is so weird. Alright, I just get to draw another card out of this fine by me. Uh, swipe is definitely by far the biggest board clear right now, so both of these are kind of ineffectual, so I'll just make a minion. Kill the 5-1 with a hero ability? You're welcome to. I've already drawn two cards out of it and taken care of one. And that's nine hit points that it's also taken from you. For justice. The battle. I will leave Bluga Warrior in hand for the moment. This feels like a pretty solid win. Having that many mechs in our early hand meant that we made a saving of three mana, got one card out for free entirely. Yeah, it was absurd. Was it three mana or two mana? No, it was two mana that we saved. Squire, attend me. Unless that Sun Fury Protector, you're fucked. Ooh, Mark of the Wild, that's good enough, actually. For the moment. Well, well, ten. No, I have lethal. Okay. 
done. Attack. Attack. And bless my kings. This guy attacks as well. Well played. Blessing of Kings most often is going to be used in a fashion similar to that, where it pushes lethal for us. Oh hey, this completes also two of my quests. So, I guess I'll set my uh, win expectations, or win hopes rather, at five. So I expect five, I hope more. Um, but that'll complete a dominance and a victory quest, so that's fine by me. That's a hundred gold right there. And then five wins usually gives you at least a hundred gold as well, so... Booyah. Uther versus Gul'dan. Mr. Blonde. Is the true super champion good enough to keep my early hand? Not when I want to combo something out with the Argent Protector. So yeah, I want something like the Abusive Sergeant, right? Which I can play on turn one, and then turn two, my opponent plays something that would kill the Abusive Sergeant. Oh, actually, they're just going to play it now. Excellent. So I just get to play the Abusive Sergeant. The best thing about this is my opponent is not going to trade down with a 3-1. Like, the best response for them right now is going to be... What? Uh, Mortal Coil, closely followed by Elven Archer or Dark Bomb. But that attacks my face. And then I Argent Protect it, and then I get to kill it for free. So... That was actually absurdly good for me. I've developed two cards on board. My opponent has lost five life and already lost one card Don't for nothing. Mess with this is my responsibility. That was probably wrong. I should have done the 6 damage to the face, because if my opponent was going to use the worst card for me, Hellfire, they were going to run their uh, dude in anyway. Yeah. That was definitely wrong. Oh well, at least I got to start developing the board. Which is super important for me, because if I am the first person developing the board, I get to use the Argent Protector far more valuably. Nope, I'll give my uh, my opponent another turn of having that uh, severe loss of tempo. The only thing that makes me pay is Cypher, Siphon Soul. Handle it. Yep. Even then, it's an equal trade. So, Luka Warrior, I'll to protect it to kill that for free and then create a reinforce. This is all set up for Enhancer Meccano. I just want to have as big as a board as possible for when Enhancer Meccano comes out so that I get uh, get some Divine Shields. That'd be pretty good. But mostly I'm looking for Wind Fury. Let the pain speak to uh, I'm tempted to actually play the Truce of a Champion as a response now. For justice. For justice. For justice. That gets to remove a 2-1, which is actually a pretty important minion in my uh, mind right now. And this also set my opponent up for drawing more cards, so I didn't want that. I don't care about the 4-5 right now. Because next turn I enhance a Meccano, and then if any of them get uh, Divine Shield, if none of them, that's if none of them get uh, Wind Fury, then the one that gets Divine Shield, I'll give Blessing of Kings, so hopefully they don't all just get torn. Um, but if one of them gets Wind Fury, I give it Blessing of Kings, and then I attack the face multiple times to win the game. Oh wait, I already have Lethal, but I still want to try this. Okay, so Enhancer Meccano. Wind Fury! <laughs> that was good fun. And then we're 2-0. Victoire. 
Oh, and that's the Paladin Priest victory. Excellent. So I guess as soon as we get to our fourth match, as long as we are 3-1 or 4-0, we'll cut to a part two. I'm feeling pretty confident about getting there at this point. Although our early games have been like severely working out for us. Even though we did make that misplay about Hellfire, we knew correctly to attack the face against the Vengeco mercenary, which is a sometimes that's a that's a very risky decision to make, but I will fight with honor. In this case it worked out for us very well. Uh this is actually a great opening hand as long as I throw back this. I need to draw the Truce of a Champion later. What I'm really looking for uh is mech. Or R mech, rather. Mech cards. So it's my hope that my opponent develops nothing this turn. And then I loot Horde next turn. They fire blast at that turn. Uh, and then on turn three, I've drawn something to play with Mech Warper. Mind if I roll me? Well, met, well met. I could play the Mech Warper, but the problem with the Mech Warper is Flame Cannon, is uh, Frostbolt. Right, even though this one dies for free, it draws me into another card. So it has a better chance of setting me up. Also, it slows my opponent's tempo. And it's not, like, value less for me. Oh, that's a truce of a champion. I also don't use the uh, Shade of Naxxramas this turn. Justice. I'd much prefer to use the Shade of Naxxramas with the Ardent Protector. Uh, I mean, Mech Warper Harvest Golem that turn would have been an okay play, but then I have to, you know, keep my... Shade in stealth. Flame cannon would be super strong for my opponent right now. Oh, glad they don't have it. I'm not glad they have that. What they do have, but I'm glad they don't have flame cannon. Um. Okay, so I'll shield this. Play the harvest golem, and then I'll attack with both of these. The shield takes the frost charge. I just don't want that freezing my face or freezing any of my minions. If my opponent has a fireball, I can pretty much expect to see it hit the shade of an extra armor this turn. Piloted Sky Golem next turn. Would they use a Polymorph this turn? I don't think so, personally. Frostbolt Ping. That's actually super effective. Wish I had the Burly Rock Draw Trog out while that happened. This is my responsibility. What I'd really like is to have Redemption out while either the piloted Golem or the uh, Harvest Golem die. Because then they come back to life and they come back to life with their Death Rattle. So they their Death Rattle activates and then they come back to life and they have another Death Rattle ready to activate. There have actually been some Death Rattle Redemption decks going about. Buff it. Let's this test first what the secret is. That goes into that next turn. So Wargan Infiltrator in case it's uh, Mirror Image. It's not Mirror Image. Burly Rockjaw Trog is better against Flame Strike. I just remember that my opponent might have Flame Strike. So if all of these are going to die, the one played first will come back to life. The one played first is the Argent Protector. That's disappointing. So I'm better off attacking this. Let me think. But that'll duplicate. But otherwise, it'll attack this and then flame strike. So okay. God damn it. Those were some pretty severe misplays I just made. So just don't do what I did there. I'm I'm gonna lose almost my whole board. I'll have a two one and a five one left after the flame strike hits. Then I guess I have to rely on Mukla. Redemption kind of somehow working out for me. This is going to be... 
If my opponent doesn't have a flame strike, I probably win, but they have a flame strike. Almost I certainly. Wonder. As a mage, well like, yeah, thank you. Well played. What? I thought they were well blading me because they were about to flame strike me. That's weird. As a mage, you don't pass up flame strike. Right? Maybe you have four flame strikes in deck and then you go, okay, now it's getting a bit nuts and you pass one up, but it's the sh it's su such a strong board clear that you can come back from almost anything with a flame strike. And then another flame strike. Why not? Of course, you still do need a surrounding strong deck to actually then capitalize on the board that you've cleared, but you know, as long as you're not me, you can do that. Because I've had a deck with like four, uh, four or five flame strikes, and then I just lost horribly. Uther, Zombie tier. Horrible opening I hand. Fight with honor. Absolutely trash. All of it's going back. As much as I love the true super champion, I'm running an aggressive deck. I need more aggressive cards. Uh oh. Mech Warper, top deck at the start. My opponent doesn't have a response of a fiery war axe, then I win the game. No. That is not what I asked for. Eh, they can still fiery war axe this. If they fiery war axe it, I think I still just coin out Harvest Golem. Hmm. Do I coin out Harvest Golem regardless? Yep. Oh, no, wait. I don't even coin out the Harvest Golem. I coin out Shade. Oh, shit. Cleave. I'm getting ready. Never mind. I was waiting for the cleave and then I was going to flip the fingers. I'm not going to push in the extra damage regardless of the fact that I can because it still dies to a fiery war axe and it still dies to a death's bite. Kind of like that one. Nowadays, everybody want to talk like they got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move the lips. Just a bunch of chipper birds and motherfuckers act, they forgot about Dre. Alright. I'm kind of hoping that my opponent doesn't have an execute in hand. Otherwise, they death splite attack the face, that gets cleared, that gets cleared. They execute the 8-7 eight, uh, eight, that's damaged. Damn it. Hey, was that from the top deck as well? Troggzor. Troggzor. I kind of want to have my King Mukla out while my Burly Rockjaw Trog's out, because if my opponent plays the bananas from King Mukla, my Burly Rockjaw Trog will get more powerful. Okay. That kills my guy. That's fine. So now piloted Sky Golem comes out. I'm still very far in ahead of my opponent here. But, I, I mean, look at my other plays with the Blessing of Kings that turn, right? I put it on any of the one health creatures. They go up to five, but then they get hit with Death's Bite. And then the AoE still kills them and the other card. Oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? Really? God damn it. That's actually really bad for you. Why would you do that? Huh. By the way, Abusive Sergeant does nothing to this. You have to buff its health in order to buff its attack. So it's got 8 damage currently. For justice! Re 
Reporting for duty. That's hopefully just to stop the 4-1. Uh, if my opponent has to use Whirlwind in order to remove my 1-1, their 4-1 will die as well, so... That is the logic there. Yeah. Well, my board goes to hell. Uh, if that trades and nothing else gets played, I'm going to be pretty happy. That doesn't count as something being played. Excellent. That's also got to be another weapon, otherwise my opponent wouldn't have done it in the way that they did. So King Markler goes down, I attack this, and then I'm going to lost Tall Strider. So it's worth noting that both of these are out of range of the Fiery War Axe, and two of my opponent's cards are Banana, and one of them was not a card that they were willing to play as a minion last turn for two or three mana. So the top deck has to be a super strong card, otherwise my opponent's straight out of this game. Truth is my shield. That's actually a really strong card. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Can we just talk about how unlikely that was? So Blessing of Kings, this guy. Oh, wait, it didn't even matter which one. I, in fact, it did matter to the tune of two health. So I hit that, and then I buff this, and then run that in. No, that doesn't make sense. This just breaks the shields. God damn it. I did that completely wrong. Entirely wrong. Don't worry, I, I know. Anyone who's going to tell me, I, I'm, I'm well aware. Armor up. Kill the 9-2. Force tank max. That card is absurdly good right now. So it's really nice to see. I'll break the shield so that I can actually play minions. Because if I didn't break the shield, that breaks its own shield by running into the Baldafist Ogre, does 7 damage, and then is still a 7-7 seven, seven as a result. I have 5 damage laying on field outside of the, uh, the Baldafist Ogre. So my opponent needs to play a taunt, heal themselves, or destroy other things as well. That's a weapon. That's got to be a weapon. It's probably a... Um, Arcanite Reaper, if I had to guess. Um... So they... They top decked six damage. Mm -hmm. After top decking a Sunwalker. Okay. Well, we're going to go part two. We are still 3 1. I did say that I was going to go to part two at a 3 1. So there will be a link to part two down in the description below. And hope to see you there.